to Vancouver now, where we want to dig a little bit deeper into a recent case that you've likely heard about. We're talking about the deaths of 27-year-old Miche Melendez and her 7-year-old daughter, Layla. Two bodies matching their descriptions were found in a rural area near Washougal last week, and the medical examiner is expected to confirm their identity sometime this week. Yesterday, hundreds of people came together for a vigil to remember the mother and daughter. So far, no arrests have been made in connection with their deaths. But police have identified Kirkland Warren, Miche's off-again, on-again boyfriend, as a person of interest. Court documents show he was the last person seen with them before they went missing. Warren's accused of previously assaulting Miche and shooting at her apartment. Court documents also show he tried pressuring her into dropping the charges against him. And Warren is no stranger to the law. He's been out on bail since 2017 for a long delayed murder trial in the state of Arkansas. And that, of course, begs the question, why on earth was a guy like this released from custody in Clark County after being arrested for a serious domestic violence offense when he was already facing a murder charge in another state? Oh, my goodness. Well, let's break this down chronologically to better understand what happened. And I should point out, so far, Warren has not been charged in connection of the deaths of Miche and Layla, but he is a person of interest. Let's go back to mid-December of 2022. That's when Warren and Miche argued at her apartment. Records show that's when Warren left and then shot at her window while Miche was looking outside. Ten days later, she called 911 to report that incident. And then five weeks later, law enforcement interviewed a friend of Miche's who was at the apartment and backed up her story of the shooting. But Miche tried to then change her story when she met with investigators. And according to court documents, she said that she lied about the shooting and that both her and her friend have mental health and drug issues, and that's the reason that they lied. The documents show Miche did not want Warren arrested, which, rightly, is a big red flag for investigators. March 2nd, Warren was arrested by Vancouver police based on Miche's original story. The next day, he made his first court appearance on several charges. During that appearance, prosecutors said a danger assessment, listen to this, found that Warren posed an extreme risk to Miche, scoring a 31 on an exam that had a scale of 1 to 18. So quite literally, off the charts dangerous. Prosecutors brought up the murder trial from Arkansas as well. And it's at this point that you could argue that Prosecutors and the judge probably should have kept Warren in custody. Active homicide case in another state, off the charts, dangerous to someone who's previously alleged domestic violence? That would seem like it'd be enough. But instead, prosecutors asked for $100,000 bail, and it was granted, meaning that Warren could get out by paying 10% of that, which is 10 grand. But here is the key to those of you shaking your head, as I was when I first didn't looked into this. The state of Washington law presumes that someone will be released from custody until they are tried and convicted, except in cases of aggravated murder. Courts can impose other conditions like bail or electronic monitoring to help ensure public safety, but the fact that releasing someone is sort of the legal default, that's the key point here. And yes, the court ordered bail. And Judge Suzanne Clark also ordered Warren to stay away from Miche and not contact her in any way. But 10 grand in a court order saying don't talk to her? Those were apparently no big deal for Warren. Documents show that just hours after that hearing, he violated the no contact order by calling Miche twice from the county jail. He told her that she was responsible for his arrest and that she needed to get the charges dropped. And then later that same day, Warren posted bail but was not released, not quite yet. He was cited in a different court for violating that no contact order. When he appeared in court for that citation, a Vancouver sergeant asked the judge to order Warren to wear a GPS monitor and to give him a higher bail. Judge Kristen Parcher agreed and ordered $10,000 bail and electronic monitoring. But the following day, the Columbian reports that case was dismissed and the charges later were added to the first case in involving the gunshot. As it turns out, Warren was not fitted with that GPS monitor before the case was dismissed. The following day, he was released on bail that he had paid with no way to track him. So on March 8th, Kirkland and Warren is back out on the street. And according to court documents, he was also back with Miche and Layla. Ten days later, the two were reported missing. Warren was arrested the 19th and in court on the 20th. And that is finally when Arkansas authorities revoked Warren's bail for that old murder case. 
He, in the meantime, has refused now extradition to Arkansas, and so he's being held without bail in Vancouver. On March 22nd, the bodies presumed to be Miche and Layla were found in a ditch near Washugo. So, to recap one more time, according to Miche, Warren shot at her in mid-December. She reported that to police, then she tried to change her story, which is not unusual at all for domestic violence victims. Police believe her first statement and arrested Warren on March 2nd. Arkansas authorities were notified that same day that their guy who faced a murder charge had been arrested. Seems like a couple of emails could have locked him down for good within a couple of hours, but that did not happen. It took until March 14th for the official paperwork from Clark County to reach the Arkansas prosecutor, and it took until March 20th for the judge there to revoke his bail. And by then, Warren had been released and Miche and Layla were found dead two days later. So what can be done? During yesterday's vigil, Democratic Representative Sharon Wiley of Vancouver said there needs to be no bail for people who are obviously dangerous. And here's my opinion. I totally agree. This case with Warren and the deaths of Miche and Layla expose all kinds of issues with the justice system. Unfortunately, we can't just wave our magic wand and fix them all. That would be nice. But something does need to be done. A violent domestic abuser, especially one that scored so high on that danger assessment, should not be out on bail. Period. If the law needs to change to keep someone like that locked up, then the law needs to change now. There needs to be more done for domestic violence victims. They need support in wake of what they've been through. And if they had to rely on their abuser in some way, financially or otherwise, they need help in order to get away and stay away. And the process needs to move so much faster. It's astounding that it took so long for the Arkansas court to revoke Warren's bail. I don't know who dropped the ball but that should never happen again. If you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, by the way, call or text the number that's on your screen there. It's 1-800-799-7233. That's the number for the National Domestic Violence Hotline. That could be a first step if you're unsure where to turn. The number again, 1-800-799-7233.